Maybe if you give us dedication, please. Yes, I will. If you will please bow your head, I'll pray for us. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the break we've had, and uh, hopefully everyone is refreshed and um, ready to be back to uh, educating our students and helping them be successful. And Lord, I thank you for each person here and the part that they play in the lives of our students. Um, we know the education part, but Lord, only you know the um, uh, support that they get, uh, the kids get from our teachers and staff. Uh, mentally and emotionally and um, I thank you for each person and their contribution to our success at CBISD. I pray Lord that you go with us tonight as we consider the um, uh, issues before us to help our district to be successful and move in the right direction for our students. I pray that you would help us to be agreeable even when we don't agree and that we would make wise choices always keeping our kids in mind. Thank you for your guidance and for your love. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Show me the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Five Honor the Texas flag, have the allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, let me see. <laughs> Our first item of business is to approve the meeting minutes from last month's meeting and from the uh, budget meeting we had on March 6th. If everybody had a chance to read that, I would entertain a motion and wave the reading of them. I'll make a motion. Motion by Ray. I'll second it. Second by Linda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Carries. Next, we'll have recognitions. All right, first up, we have a representative from the Missouri County Retired Teachers Association. That happens to be Paula Reiki, the better part of the Reiki marriage. And others, and others. So Henry could have wore his Blue Needville shirt if he wanted to tonight. We wow. don't know. But, uh, and a retired TBISD teacher, so she's here to help. Oh, you got some friends with you, too. And we got some other retired uh, teachers. So too. I've introduced you. I'm going to let you take over. All right. This is Cecil Duke. She taught in Angleton. And this is Becky She taught in Edwards and Austin. We want to share with you the uh, $1,000 for your education foundation. And uh, we've made a check. We shot you all first, and now we're going to show it to them. And uh, Roxanne's going to take a picture of it. But, uh, get up, get up. When you're a retired teacher, you do all these things to volunteer. And you make some money along the way. And so we're sharing it with all the districts in our area. We're sharing uh, money every year. And Columbia Resoria is the district that we're sharing with today. And it's to, for your teacher foundation. The teacher grant foundation is what we're calling it. It's for your educational foundation for all the good things that you provide the extra money for, for teachers in the classroom. And we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. Thank you all so very much. Uh, next up, we have our 226 awards. The 226 awards are Columbia Missouri ISD is 225 square miles for the 226 award is for those individuals that go the extra mile. So tonight we're going to start with Bo, you're going to introduce. Sure. Yeah. Um, tonight we have a group of students that Ms. McCarthy would like to recognize along with Mr. Raymond from Wild Peach Elementary. Um, we have a lot of boys and girls. 
So first of all, I would like to recognize Mr. Raymond, who is arguably the best teacher I have ever worked with in 34 years of being an educator. He energizes kids. He brings something to the classroom that nobody else brings. The energy, the love for children, the love for education, the motivation he brings to the children, the positive attitude he brings to our campus. Mr. Raymond is the gold standard of what we would all like our teachers to be. So I'd like to recognize Mr. Raymond. Raymond currently serves as the Wild Peach Elementary STEM teacher and the gifted and talented teacher. Y'all turn around this way so your mamas and daddies can see you. <laughs> and so I got the message from Mr. Galloway about the Brazoria County Science Fair, and I said, Mr. Raymond, Mr. Raymond, <laughs> and I said it sure would be nice. And so Mr. Raymond did. And now he's going to tell you about what these remarkable young children did. Wild Peach has outstanding students. These are our GT students. And this is actually our first year competing in the Brazoria County Science Fair. Doing that, these guys have stepped up to the plate and not only competed, but also got first place. <laughs> That's right, they got the, each one of them got a medal for first place. It, and and uh, the, the wonderful thing about it is the two, the other two groups that were competing in our GT group, they, they would have got first place, they were just beaten out by their own school. <laughs> <laughs> they got second place. <laughs> so that was actually my first year, and so I didn't realize that how many categories I could have moved them or how well our kids we're going to be doing because we have such fine students. Uh, our kindergarten did egg and, and vinegar. Uh, what a wonderful job with this. One quick story with this is this is also my first year doing egg and vinegar. And so our kids, the first day that they did it, we were trying to decide how far up to drop a raw egg. They decided 12 inches was the proper amount. We put, we did, after the drop, we realized 12 inches was too high and we moved it to five inches because all of us was wearing egg. All four of us. Yeah. <laughs> they did a fantastic job. Our elephant toothpaste, these guys with this, we we started out with, with one idea that, of, of doing this and it actually didn't work out. So these guys adapted and instead decided to do different different amounts of, what is that? What's that? Hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, <laughs> exactly. So we did different amounts to see how much it would overflow the container, so we measured that. It was a fantastic job by first grade. Wonderful job by both both groups. Uh, like I say, I, our, our second place, they were also fantastic. Our GT department here at, at Wild Peach is fantastic and a great job to these kids. Wonderful. our students. First, we have our kindergarten student, Anori Minshu. All right. Next, we have another kindergarten student, Noah McDonald. We have a first grade student, Ronan Martin. We have another first grade student, Ryan Thatch. And another first grade student, Jordan Kessler. Kiddos, if y'all will scooch together tight like we have to do when we take big group pictures. And 
We had another kindergartner who couldn't be here tonight, Kamari Free. Parents, make sure you get your pictures. You can come and get them. No, I'll hold it down a little bit so you can there you go. Parents, you can move so you get a good picture. Come on. Come on, parents. <laughs> One more. Parents, we're so very proud of your children. Yes. We expect this to be won many awards. Well done, guys. Well done. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep the good work up. He will. <laughs> Okay. Moms and dads, y'all don't have to stay for the rest of the Congratulations. Can I stop on Good job, Brian. Congratulations. Good job, Brian. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Next up is our campus communication, and here we start with this time. We are going to do backwards order, so we are starting with Wally Shelman. There you go, It's here. Look, look how awesome the school looks. We have our new canopy out front. It, they started the Friday before spring break, and they worked and worked and worked. Oh, David. They worked the whole time. They did a little bit of finishing yesterday, and it is just amazing. Um, it really opens up the front of the school. There's this nice big covered area if we wanted to do something outside. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was worth the wait. I don't know how long it's been. <laughs> so coming next week is the TEA-sponsored Mobile STEM Lab. This is a really <laughs> huge, big deal for Wild Peach Elementary and CBISD. Miss mm -hmm. um, Fowler helped me apply for this, and hundreds of schools, thousands of schools across Texas applied, and we got picked. Mm -hmm. 35 schools in Texas got picked. We got picked. Mm -hmm. It's a big, big deal. You are invited to come out on Tuesday or Wednesday and see for yourself. The kids will be doing projects <coughs> based on children's literature, Jack and the Beanstalk, Three, Bear, Three Pigs, Goldilocks, and then a music and dance. You are invited to come and see. Um, we are so excited. And then if you can't come during the day, we have family STEM night on Tuesday from five to seven. I would love to see you guys come by. It's a great Just coming Tuesday, Wednesday? Next week. Next yeah, next week. It's a great feather in CBISD's cap to get this. My understanding is that you'll actually have a couple of TA representatives <coughs> yes. coming by, coming by to see it next as well. Yes, we are super excited about this. So um, the week before spring break was Texas Public School Week, and we did it up big. We had special um, themed days. Monday was my future's bright because I have great teachers and the students dressed like teachers, and this young fellow, he dressed like me. He's got the blazer on. Um, he's like, Ms. McCarthy, I look like you. Um, then we had, uh, my future is bright because I attend a Texas public school and the children dressed um, in career attire. We have a hairdresser, a nurse, and a couple of doctors there. 
Please note that these are all Hispanic females and they have great aspirations to be in the medical field. And we know that Columbia High School through the CTE program is gonna make them realize their dreams. Then Wednesday we had <clears throat> Texas Public Schools are super and we had the kids dress like superheroes and here's a collection of Spider-Men and one Spider-Girl. Um, we have all kinds of costumes, but I picked my favorite. Yeah. Um, so as you guys know, I'm retiring, and this really was my last rodeo. <laughs> Wild Peach Elementary for Texas Public School Week has a rodeo um, because rodeo is the official sport in Texas. And our Columbia High School pals came and they ran the games for us. And some West Brazos Junior <coughs> High School students, the Stewart kids came and they brought their horses and demonstrated horsemanship and roping. And the next one, the kids played in all kinds of different games. Um, we had um, barrel racing. We had a stick horse race. We had, um, Jeez, good. went away. We had a grand entrance parade on the stick horses, just like they do at the real rodeo. Mr. Junior Diver brought his tractor and trailer out and gave the kids all a hayride. We had donations from Stewart's Grocery for the teachers to have a hot dog lunch. And we had donations from HEB so the kids could have an afternoon snack with s'mores. We had a parent who's really into rodeo and raising cattle, and she brought her bottle cap for the kids. Our PTO brought out BB's Barnyard, and the kids said this was the best day ever. <laughs> and so it's our last rodeo, or my last rodeo. <laughs> That's going to be super hard to beat. <laughs> that was like the best day ever. Well, first tonight I wanted to highlight a wonderful opportunity that our students are privileged to participate in, which is going to Camp Allen. Y'all know our fifth graders are sponsored by St. Mary's and are able to go each year. So I want to highlight some of the amazing things that they get to do while they're there. Of course, there's archery, and you're talking s'mores, canoeing. As you can see, this is my favorite photo with a towel around her neck. Um, doing the ropes courses, building shelters. But I think the most favorite thing that they all come back talking about is the next slide, which is actually a living museum that they experience in, yes, thank you, in the woods, where they actually hike through the trails and come upon famous people from Texas history who give kind of a, a background about the role that they played in Texas and Texas history, and they get to dress up and do all that. So it's a wonderful experience too, that our kids get to enjoy and learn so much from as well. The next one, I wanted to, to show you how we are celebrating what we call our hoppers at WCE. And these are students who are showing growth. They're going from one level of accomplishment to the next in their star ratings and how they're working the levels. And if they have two stickers, that's because in two different subjects, they hop from one level to another. So we had our hopper ceremony recently where they received uh, their stickers that say, Ms. Fulton is proud of me. So we we're excited to celebrate that. We also had um, Texas Public School Week and we had our, a literacy themed open house event. And uh, I wanted to highlight second grade because they did book tastings mm -hmm. at our open house and had different genres of books for the parents and families to come in and read and try and determine what was their favorite genre after tasting them all. I thought it was super cute and fun. We also had our fourth grade Texas program that also highlighted our Texas Wax Museum where the students dressed up with famous Texans living and uh, deceased and they had to memorize a speech where you could step on their star or their Texas at the ground and they would say the speech that they had um, researched and written themselves <laughs> about their famous Texan. And last but not least, I wanted to also highlight our students who are really exceeding and meeting their goals in ST Map. We recently had Gigi come to campus and celebrate those goals that they had achieved. So we got to take pictures with Gigi and their certificates for finishing the grade level, doing 100 puzzles, and so on. Good deal. Thank you. Very much. All right. At West Brazos Junior High, we had Crime Stop 
Shoppers, uh, Bullying Prevention, come in and talk to our seventh and eighth graders about mental health and give them some resources and some look fors, um, which was very beneficial for our seventh and eighth graders. We followed that in the same day with the Ned Show for our sixth graders. It was more um, age appropriate, and they also brought in the yo-yos, and that was a big hit for our students and a great fundraiser too. Uh, the Ned Show actually comes in for free and does a the yo-yo sell to cover their costs, and so our students are yo-yoing it up um, <laughs> and having a great time with that. But the basis behind that was bullying prevention as well. So we were excited to be able to offer those two things. Um, we also had our very first parent data night at West Brazos Junior High, where our parents could come up and pick up their <coughs> NWEA MAP scores and the parent portal um, information to understand <coughs> what they're actually looking at and the website so that they can go and look at this data. Because we realize we need our student buy-in and our parent buy-in to understand um, what this assessment or this growth is looking like. Our dance team went to competition our first year for dance and they brought back lots of uh, awards so we're very proud of them and I believe dance tryouts are tonight so they're our eighth graders um, are, are super excited about that. Our business class got creative and they're actually pulling out old magazines and doing the cut out the different things throughout the pages and getting creative and you can see our, our boys are just like the girls are getting creative and working together and, and somewhat competitive on who has the best project so that's exciting. On the next page, we had our career fair the, the Friday before we got out for spring break, and we were super excited about the amount of people that came out and had booths. We had Phillips 66, we had Brazoria Vet Clinic, we had the Mosquito Control was a big, a big one from Brazoria County. Um, we had the Sheriff's Department come out, and uh, it, was, it was really good to see our students interacting with the community, um, having those conversations. They went grade level by grade level. We had cosmetology, and it also falls in line with them choosing their course selections, our eighth graders going up into the high school, our sixth and seventh graders looking at end of year things. Our PTO, we are still blown away by our first year of PTO at West Brazos Junior High. They came out and did this whole spread for our teachers before we got out for, for spring break, and so that was a great boost of morale for our teachers to be able to come down and, and laugh and giggle and, and have lunch together. And then our UIL academic party was held. We had 116 students participate at West Brazos Junior High at the UIL academic um, competition, and we had 49 students placed in their event. So um, they got to come all together and have some Capri Suns and cupcakes and, and um, get out of class and acknowledge each other's awards and things. And then on our last page, uh, last board, me board meeting, I didn't have a chance to acknowledge um, some of our Rouse About Teachers of the Week and students of the week, so that's still going strong. So these are some of our students that were nominated. It's going kind of back and forth. Each week, we it's either teacher nominations or the following week, it's student nominations. So we're kind of getting a mix of both, and um, it's been a great highlight, uh, along with our shout-outs. But th there's, there's three shout-outs per grade level every week. So those are announced in Bout TV, and they're also announced in the cafeteria among their peers. So that's been a great hit. So... Yeah. 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 Great. So just an update on construction. I know Mr. Gallagher shared some of these pictures with you, but we can see we're making great, great progress. Uh, gyms are coming along that whole area there. We've got the steel beams up, and it's just amazing watching all of that go up. We've got a lot more of the foundation poured, and they're, they're ready to pour more of the foundations. We're getting to see the outline of the new building, what it looks like, and it's pretty exciting to see that come along. Monday, Tuesday of next week, we are hosting soccer playoff games. Monday, the, the lady, the lady uh, next will play Columbus, and on Tuesday. So if you go to the STEM, the STEM Mobile Lab Tuesday, then you can swing by Griggs Field and watch the boys' soccer game. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope to see you guys come out on both Monday and Tuesday night to support our soccer our soccer teams. Uh, boys basketball, we had Case and Lewis first team all district and Camp Page second team all district. Had a couple honorable mentions, but we're very proud of the five students that made the academic all district. So we just wanted to, to uh, have a shout out for those guys. Tomorrow, you're all invited, 1.30 to 3 in the auditorium, we'll have our signing day. So we've got a bunch of athletes signing to continue their careers into college. 
I see the list of the students there. So we're hoping to make that a, a big event tomorrow, celebrate those students for their successes, and hopefully they continue on that success. We also uh, received the Global Education Excellence Award, and that is for the foreign exchange students. So we actually have Simone Rasse, who's here from Italy, to come talk to you and present the award to Mr. Galloway. School Exchange here. I would like to present the Global Education Excellent Award to Columbia High School for uh, the acceptance of students like me and for uh, the dedication to cultural exchange. Thank you so much. Where are you from? Italy. Italy. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm a big believer in foreign exchange kids. I still remember when I was teaching uh, a U.S. history, 11th grade U.S. history at Angleton High School, I had a foreign exchange student by the name of Holger Volk. He was from Germany. Made a 100 on every assignment for the whole year. Impossible. U.S. history. He's German, right? <laughs> and so on the final exam, I put questions that weren't on the review on the final exam. But that dude read the book and knew the answers. <laughs> I'm just saying, I appreciate what you're doing here, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, did you get your picture? No, I don't. Oh, stop. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> ah. One moment. Name is Bailey up there. She's the coordinator. You want to hear Miss Bailey? Yeah, the one who really gets. <laughs> <laughs> and so, since Miss Bailey didn't want to take a picture, we'll make her talk about the next slide so she'll go to the dancing dolls. <laughs> so, um, at the beginning of spring break, I got to go with the dancing dolls to New York for um, their trip. It was fun. I counted 61 ducks the whole four days that I was there, making sure everyone was on the bus when they needed to be there. Um, these are just some of the group pictures that we took, but the, the really cool highlight of the trip, um, the girls and young men that went with us um, were able to go and see the Broadway musical Six. And the next day, one of the cast members from the musical did their dance class. And so they actually got to take a dance class on Broadway and then go to a Radio City Music Hall and actually dance on the stage at Radio City Music Hall. So, so it was kind of cool for them to be able to experience that. And then we just wanted to thank Ms. McCarthy for allowing her students to come and enjoy your last rodeo. <laughs> So thank you for involving our students in that. Thank uh, you for lending. Last, our teacher of the month was Johnny Tebow. We just want to make sure that she received that recognition. She does a great job. Good. Fair enough. Ms. Company. So last last meeting, I was really excited because we went first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one of the things that we had the, actually the same day that Gigi visited was Columbia Elementary, and I believe Wild Peach Elementary. Is we had our ST Math Night. ST Math Night. If you've never been, it was our first time to host one. It was pretty amazing. So ST Math, um, sponsored by Philip 66, they pro they provide board games for all the families, and so. The way the games are designed is the game parents, you have to play with your child, but it's a book. The parents read a book to help guide them through the game. And we had over 100, we ran out of pizza. We had over 127 people attend. Gigi did make an appearance, which uh, kudos to Mr. Martin, because <laughs> since Gigi was worn at two other campuses, <laughs> yes, um, it's very heavy. And whenever I was helping to take the legs off, because you have to put legs on. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would have been brave enough to do that. There were a lot of germs that were accumulating. <laughs> but our students absolutely loved 
loved it. So I, I truly expected our second graders being familiar with Gigi to just be all poured in, but the students, our older kids wanted to take pictures and our families, the feedback from our family, they wish the night was longer. They truly had a wonderful time. So it was great. All right, so the next picture, one of the things that we have started uh, at Barrow is we have Pi Day. So Pi Day, we send um, the numbers of digits in Pi home for students to memorize. We usually do it the Friday before spring break, but we had birds of prey come, so we weren't able. Students are to recite as many digits of Pi that they are able to. And then on Friday, so this coming Friday, students will be able to Pi the principal, um, the <laughs> students from each grade level that recited the most. So I will tell you that the two boys pictured on top, they happen to be siblings. The little one on the left is in third grade. He recited up to 214 digits. Wow. The little boy on the right is a fifth grader. He's recited 331 digits. Of wow. Yes. Uh, they, well, it's, it's optional. It's something that's meant to be fun to, you know, math is important. What can we do to make math fun? So the students on the bottom all participated. Our second grade student who had the most recited as a second grader, I want to say was 28. Um, our fourth grader, I think was 34. So I mean, you get them in, at every every level and we joked with some of them because some of them come in and they already knew how many so-and-so recited and we're like, you know, it's okay because I only know 3.1459 and that is it. I cannot do it anymore. So you beat the SCOE. Yeah. And, and so, um, so hi, Dave. Yeah, it, it's fun. So we will definitely share pictures of us getting pie. <laughs> um, one of the things that Barrow we try to support whenever we have the chance is our veterans. So we will always do something um, when there's a need for our veterans, what can we do to help fill that need? So right now we have our Warriors Refuge Drive happening and grade levels are charged with bringing an item to help fill the need that they have for um, the, the people that they have, the veterans that they have there. So, you know, the Warrior Refuge, was new to us getting to familiar with it. They've shared some information with the teachers, so we're able to share with the students. So the students always know when we're collecting items, what it's for, what the purpose is, and how, you know, every morning we talk to them about being respectful, responsible, good citizens is one of the things that we really want our students to leave Barrow knowing how to be a productive <coughs> citizen in society when they leave us. And not only that, but what does that mean? It. And so these are some of the things, that's why we choose these things, just to give back to those that help us whenever we can. So just sh sharing that, well, we will share numbers. I know, I know a family, I don't know where they ordered it, came in with a big box of the powder-based deodorants and first day, because Mondays, you know, you usually don't see very many come in, but he came with a box. Do you want me to help you carry that in? Nope, I got it. Okay. Make <laughs> sure it got to your class, but all right. But I think that's all we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Good, good, good. Yeah. So we have one sister her. Okay. Becky 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 that's it. Oh, okay. My list has grown. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I have to apologize. I'm kind of the downer. This is all great reports, but Paula asked me to bring the big check back because we yes. need to give it to our, show our members at our next meeting. Speaking <laughs> of our next meeting, you remember how Lewis Gardner used to come to every convocation and say, join retired teachers, join retired teachers? I knew some of y'all are going to be approaching retirement, and then there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Rosario County Retired Teachers uh, Association, we do great things too. We've been educators all our life, and so we're still at it. Some of you may remember we brought books, boxes and boxes of books to school, so every kid got a book. Um, recently, Sweeney Elementary, every kid got a book. This summer, we brought boxes of books to West Columbia Elementary, so the summer school kids and those who were uh, coming for free lunch got a book. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of projects we do when you get ready to retire. Rosario County Retired Teachers, come and join us. Um, and also, I'm going to hand you, Mary, a, a contact. We have a whole bunch of books for little kids, not enough for the big kids right now. So your campus mm -hmm. could be on our next on our list. All right. Now, 
the ugly stuff. Um, <laughs> So glad to hear all these fun things you're doing. You know what my grandson did at high school this week? He sat in a room and took practice tests for state tests. It is one of the burrs under my saddle. It's been there since I was teaching myself and had to have my students sit there and do nothing all day long to practice a stupid test that they've been taking since they were this high. And somehow we decide closing down education, closing down instruction, is a way to help them. I'll bet you Mr. Raymond would say, yeah, give me kids and we'll do science experiments. They'd much rather do rodeo and learn something from that. They'd rather be sitting and reading a book. So anything we can do as the public, as educators, we need to really start a campaign. I don't know where this practice test stuff comes from, but we sure have to stop it. You got a kid sitting there four hours, three days, four hours every day doing nothing. That's not education. That's torment. And all different levels of kids are stuck in the same room doing the same thing. Uh, my own kids, my oldest one, it led to more rebellion than anything else because he didn't need that and it was driving him crazy. Your classroom teachers know which kids need help. Address the kids that need help, let the rest have class, and continue educating kids. All right, the other thing that I really intended to speak about very briefly, because it's really a downer, we believe in Brazoria County, you know, it's a wonderful community. We don't have uh, a lot of crazy people doing nuts so things that are, are harmful and whatnot. And I bring this just for information. A parent of a junior high kid contacted a group of us today with an incident that happened at the sixth grade uh, campus. A sixth grader stood up during lunch and gave a, a Nazi salute and shouted, Heil Hitler. Okay, that's not good. But he continued and had conversations with the kids about killing Jews. So just as a matter of information, I don't by any means think, oh my gosh, there's something horrible going on in junior high. But I think we need to be aware. We, we trust our community. We think that everything's fine and dandy. But we do need to be aware, kind of keep our ears open for what's going on on campuses and perhaps you know have some kind of plan or some kind of thing to address in some of our academic classes to make sure the kids really understand the history behind some of these things that have happened in the past that we don't want to see repeated. And so that parent was very disturbed enough about it to, to share it with a large group. And I said, I'm going to school board tonight. I'll share it with them. So <laughs> there you go. Um, that's it. Hit my list. Um, I'm going to give her that email address. And I'll get out of your way. Y'all can have the boring part. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. With that, that will bring us to the reports. Probably. <laughs> uh, he's going to report of justice. Oh, okay. Hey. Yes. Okay, I'm here. All right, well, now that spring break's over, we are continuing our day to day operations, but we are also focusing and trying to be up for graduation and then start planning out our summer projects, all the painting and, and standard restoration stuff that we can't do just because the instruction's in place. So, um, amongst that planning, we are looking into, and I have Mr. Jared McCurley here with E3. If y'all remember, E3 was a group that helped us do the wild peach ceiling tile and lighting project. Uh, and he's also helped us on a couple other little projects with some air conditioners and stuff that we just couldn't get. But with that, uh, I'm going to let Mr. McCurley talk about the, the plans and this, this, the ideas of what we're going to do with some mechanical, some air conditioning equipment that we have throughout the district, considering that a lot of this stuff is getting up there in age and we really are going to start planning on replacing it. And with some LED lighting upgrades, and with that on how how that can save the district money and put it back in our pocket. So with that being said, I'm going to let him take over so he have a better, he can explain this better than I can because I'll certainly butcher it. Well, I'm going to introduce it first. So it's, okay. One of our things is, you know, we, we talk about five-year plan, 10-year plan, 15-year plan. 
money, finances, how are we doing? As an example, most people don't know that we're locked in at an electrical rate of three cents through the year 2036, right? Those are things people don't know. We try to find everything we can to that makes sense uh, and, and does good for the district. And so as we're looking at our five-year plan and our things like roofs, eight big ticket items, right? HVAC, chillers, lighting projects. How are we gonna afford this, right? Right, when say the junior high is built into, in, in, well the high, let's just use Columbia High School. This part was built in 2000, it's now 2024. You know, you start looking at things that were paid for with bond election money at one time, and now it's different money. How are you gonna, how are you gonna do that? And so we're always looking at trying to find economical ways. And so as we were doing our five-year plan, Justin and I talking about our HVAC, one of the things we ask is, okay, what's our projection on every unit, right? How, how many are five years old and what, where, is it worth it? How much longer do we have? When's that sweet spot to replace it? What does it look like when you replace something? Are you waiting a year? Remember, we've waited, what, 18 months for chillers? So we know we have to be looking at because we don't want to be caught red-handed and just not be able to have anything, right? So that's where that started. That's where Jared comes in, coming in and helping us look at everything we have in, in CBISD. And so, we, and so Jared and his team have done that. And is that going to be part of your presentation tonight? I mean, it'll be. And so one of the things Jared came to us about was that we're just asking you to consider this. One of the things that's new through, is it the state? SECO, uh, the State Energy Conservation Office. There's a, there's a project out there that basically it's a 2.5% it, it, loan, if you want to say it, right? So one of the things you have to do is you have to qualify. And so Jared's taken our information. And long story short, if we replace it with what we have with the new, is it good for uh, you know, does it save energy? Is it good for the environment? Those kind of things. And so he's made a list of things in our district, and it's, I want to say it's about $4.8 million worth of upcoming expenses in that area that are worth it. And the state does have a plan. It's kind of like a loan. It works a little different, though. You turn it in, you get approved, and if you want to take advantage of it, meaning if... Jared was able to get a consultant to take care of, let's just say, I don't know, $500,000 worth of HVAC equipment. We would pay for it. We would, if we're approved through the state, we would file it with them. Long story short, they would reimburse us and then we start paying that loan back at a 2.5% interest rate, right? Make a yearly payment, we can pay it. We can pay, you can go up to 15 years. 15 years. And so at the end of the day, we're just bringing you something to think about, not asking you to say yes. The biggest piece of this is looking at our equipment and the age, the anticipated lifespan that we have now, have now when it's going to come due, and then how do we pay for it. All right. So with that, Jared. Great. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to, I'll keep this brief. I know you have other things on your uh, agenda tonight. So um, that's exactly right. If you want to go to the, the next day, go. we're a program first. At, we're a program that's, uh, that understands that most of the decisions, basically all the decisions that y'all make revolve around two things, which is that you want a safe and comfortable environment for your students and you want efficient use of the taxpayer dollars. Most of the decisions that y'all make are, are, revolve around those. This program, which was really created by TASB, was, um, was to help you with those two things, was we help with HVC, roofing and lighting. We also figure out different ways to fund these programs. So in the past, we've, we've just done some chillers with you, we've done lights, but didn't have anything to do with this type of program. It just so happens that you guys are kind of in the sweet spot, and I'll show you why. So uh, next week, no, I switched to the, we don't need to, we'll go past all that, we are kind of talked about it. So here's their executive summary. So what we did was we had engineers come through and, and tinker with everything, and here's a whole list of your, uh, your HVAC um, inventory, as well as lights, and, and looking at how your control systems were working, and, and you have some power factor correction issues that we can do. But, but the executive summary is this, is that everywhere except for Wild Peach, uh, is you can do a, a lighting, an LED lighting retrofit, for the most part. I, when I say everywhere, of course, you have some spots that, that already have LEDs. But for the most part, most of the district needs to do a lighting uh, retrofit, except for Wild Peach. 
as well as you have some sports lighting issues that are happening right now. I um, mean, I'm talking about the um, the, the baseball field lights. There, there's some of them are out. That happens. Um, as you are expanding, you maybe some these football field lights uh, could possibly get changed as well. So LED football lights and baseball lights, they, they're part of this program. So that's, that's something to consider as well. But the HVAC replacement's the big part. That, that's what everybody really cares about, which is when you look at your total district's tonnage, and that's minus your new school. So this is the existing tonnage minus that they, you just tore down a bunch. About 50% of it is, is beyond its ec economic useful life. So that's 751 tons of the district's tonnage is over 15 years. That's usually in this area when a district should start considering changing out a DX unit or a chiller. Will they last 20 years? They will. Um, but they'll also, they can also fail at 12. So in about 15 years, a district needs to stay, and they also become more and more expensive to stay alive or keep alive, um, and refrigerant gets more expensive and so on and so forth. Most of the equipment I'm about to go over with you here is, but it, most of it's 18 years old and more, and some are 23 years old. So about 50% of the tonnage is beyond economic useful life. A lot of that comes from two air-cooled chillers at West Brazori, uh, West Brazos Junior High, 32 units uh, with the DX, difference between the chilled water DX are like the ones at your house. Some are big, but they're two different types of cooling systems. So next one, I'll show you where, the, where the, all that is. But here's a breakdown. Of, um, of your total uh, number of units in the district um, that are by age. So, or I'm sorry, this is a tonnage, not uh, units. So at the very top there is that red, red line. That means everything over 25 years old. So you have a couple units that are over 25 years old. Then you have a couple units um, or 120, I'm getting close to my eyes, 123 tons <laughs> over uh, between 26 and 30 years old. Oh, that, yes, that's right. And then that, I'm sorry, I'm messing my, my colors up. I'm sorry. The orange is, uh, is, is 20, yeah, yeah, it's 20 years old. And then the, uh, the yellow is when it's starting to start being replaced. That's 14 to 20 years, uh, 14 to, yeah, 14 to 20 years. So long story short, this is natural for a school district. Obviously, as you build new, it goes down to the green. And as things age, it goes up to the top. This is just DX. It doesn't include the, uh, the chilled water. But what you really, what a district really wants is to, it to be about 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, because that's how that's how it naturally will age when you turn it over. So right now you're a little bit lopsided on how much HVAC is coming of age. It means these are going to start replacing themselves soon. So it's in your budget somewhere. You just don't necessarily know when it's coming. So the next next one. And this is where the, all these uh, units are. A bunch of them are at the uh, at the high school. That's the older part. It said was built in 2000. Is that right? Well, it was updated in 2000. Okay. So they're, they're, most of them are 23, 24, 24 years old. Um, and then Barrow Elementary. And then Wild Peach. You can see they have, there's a, a, quite a few older ones at Wild Peach. And the support services. So that's the breakdown of where these units are. Now switch over to your chilled water. Now this is better. This is probably what you want. Um, where you have, this is your chilled water systems. You just replaced quite a few chillers. You have uh, that top one, that, that's West Brass's Junior High. So those are two larger chillers that are they're, uh, 19 years old each. So again, uh, and in this part of the, uh, of the world, you're just a little bit closer to the ocean. Chillers take a beating down here. Their fins just don't last as long. So I, we're replacing often it. 15 years, 16 years, but these have done well. Y'all, your maintenance guys have kept them alive, and it's and they're, but but it's time to either have a plan because they they start replacing themselves whether you want them to or not. So, but this is so. If you do a program like this, just all that red at the top just goes to green at the bottom. So, switch. So. You have some needs, meaning that's great. There's a bunch of money worth of stuff. Everybody knows that we have to have money to replace things. However, in y'all's situation, um, you can save about $362,000 a year off of your m and budget if you were to do all these things. So that's what we try to we come up with, and there's a whole spreadsheet to prove that out. But um, it's if you change out all your to LEDs, if you do this HVAC equipment, and uh, it'll reduce your utility usage, you won't be changing ballast anymore. You won't be changing lights. The LEDs have 15-year warranties on the interior. So all that comes together, and, and, and what Mr. Galloway was saying is that SECO, if you can come up with a way 
for a project to pay for itself through m and reduction. So it has to pay for itself, it's budget neutral. So really, you're not asking for new money. You're just looking into your budget and saying, we're just not gonna pay the utility company anymore or buy lights and, and ballasts. We're gonna flip that and pay back a SECO loan over 15 years. So if you can come up with a budget neutral project, they'll give you $5 million of 2.5% interest money. So you got that's right. Your total amount for 15 years, if you save 362,000 a year, is worth 5.4 million dollars. So we put together an application for the district to submit to SECO to see if they'd be willing to set that money aside. It doesn't mean that you're committing to anything. All you sign in the application is, hey, will you set that aside? If we can then prove to the to SECO, they make you prove it that through, and they have third party engineers and everything that you can save this money and that you need to do this work. So next. So this is it, uh, or they have one more for me. So there's really only, again, there's three ways that y'all can fund things typically, or it's, you've gotta have fund balance, gotta have bonds, or some sort of maintenance operations, um, or maintenance tax notes, maintenance um, loans. But then there's this fourth way, which is an m and loan, but it's the State Energy Conservation Office, up to 15 year term. Two and a half percent interest, which is lower than you can get anywhere, and it's all has to be self-funded. So, from the district's perspective, again, you wouldn't pay any more money. It would just be a reallocation within your existing budget, but you get five million dollars worth of lights and chillers and air conditioning. So, questions on that? This is the end of it. So, if you decide that you're if you're interested. What SECO does want you to do, if they're going to set their money aside, there's only so much, and it runs out. Uh, it hadn't run out for years because for a while there, you could go and get a 2% loan on the market, but you can't right now. So for a long time, it was almost more of a headache. We just hey, you know, go get a maintenance tax note. Well, now the interest rates are much higher. They ran out of money this last year. Uh, they ran out in about July. So this year, um, that's why we went ahead and put in that application. So what you're committing to is that if they set that money aside for you, that you'll get an engineer to, the next step is you have to put together a utility assessment report. Again, proving out that all of these things will happen and that you'll be able to save this money. And then, the, uh, and then their third party engineer goes through it and says, yes, this will happen or it won't happen. So you're not trusting us. That's, that's the good news of this, is that you, you don't trust this random E3 company that, that comes along. We, we, just are, we help put this together and we have a bunch of engineers and then the state decides whether or not they think that you're, it'll actually save this for you. Of course, and we've done a lot of these projects, so we're, we're, we know how to do them, but, um, but it, ultimately the state wants to know that it's gonna save before they give you this money. Um, so we've done it all over the place. These aren't all SECO projects, but a lot of them are SECO projects. Um, we've done a lot of work for you uh, in the past. We've already done three chillers for you in the past and HVAC units and so on and so forth. But, that's the end of my presentation. Do y'all have any questions? I know that was a, a lot to, yeah. to So apparently you've already done some sort of study because you've got the age and stuff for our systems. That's right, yes. And you did that to determine, to fill out the application. That's correct. So if we replaced everything you said, what kind of dollars are we looking at today's dollars? It's about, oh, to do all of the things that we think it's gonna take to get that savings number, it was about $4.8 million. Okay. And the savings come through how now? It's through, so the, the watt reduction of the LED lights going from 32 watts everywhere down to 13 watts. Um, the controls, you, you need a, a pretty extensive controls, uh, retro commissioning and controls upgrade to make all the pumps and the chillers run correctly. And then the efficiency of the chillers. So it's all, almost all of it is out of your utility budget. That was a long way to say your, your natural gas and electric Bill will drop. So you're saying four point something versus the savings will justify five point something. That's right. So can we do less than the five million? I mean, if it only takes four, can we do it because that savings covers that? Or that's right. So I, I but I've got myself bitten in the past <laughs> where where we put in for less and then, no, no, oh, right. I'm yeah. saying. Well, important, right. important nature grows, they said, oh, can we do more? And I said, well, no, we only asked for four million. We can't do five, so, yeah. yeah. So we all were asking for as much as you possibly could do, but you can do $2 million. So we filed the application. If we get approved, 
Did we get an engineer to substantiate what y'all did? That's right. Well, we we would we're hoping to be the the um, engineer to put the report together and. Okay, so y'all, it's, it's not a conflict of interest because you've done this and no. filed the report to do that engineering. Stuff. That's correct. So you've pretty much done all the work at this point in time. Then. A lot of the work, like work. Yes, at least we know the basis. We've probably done thirty percent of the work. That's right. To to finalize and to give all of the engineering numbers that they have that they have to have, it it'll, it takes us a while. But. And the cost for something like that would be. So we generally charge two percent for the UAR. Two percent for, and that's that's two percent of the of total the, requesting of the of the budgeted amount. So it's four point eight four point eight million. Um, that's but we are wanting. We're not. So I, I should have gone into that a little bit more. We're really builders. That's ultimately what we are. So we we would like to design it and then build the work that ends up coming. So uh, we're we're engineers and then and we go out and get all the bids and pull it together. So it might not be or four point eight million. It might be less. It might be a little bit more. So when we design all this, we submit it. And if they say yes, that's the project that you um, that you can do then we would like to come and build it. And we've already bid everything out according to the UAR, and then it just would be purchased through either a purchasing cooperative or a number of uh, So the fee we pay you for the engineering side, can that be rolled into the total dollars Thank to get you. back? You beat me to it. So ultimately, we're not, oh, yes. Now we're not gonna ask you for 2% upfront, or meaning that's not, what we're, that's not what we're after, I guess. What we would like to do is be able to engineer the whole thing and build it for you. And it said y'all did approximately 50 projects. So how how successful is it y'all's estimation of actual savings versus projected savings versus actual savings after you do a job? And generally, I think our savings or what SQL will allow you to do is conservative. So because I, I get that, what happens if we don't save it? Is there I mean, if you, you say 365 thousand or whatever it was, and you only say it was 150, then we're eating 200 grand a year. You know, yes, because it, it did work out the way you said. Right. And you know, generally, SECO, SECO's um, calculations are conservative compared to what the market, uh, other engineers or other programmers, if, if we just showed up and said, hey, we can do this for you, they put a governor on the, on the amount of savings that they'll accept. Okay. Last question is, usually anything over twenty five or 50000 has to go up for bids. Mm -hmm. Y'all doing this project, what if you do come in with contracts to do all the work? Is that bidding requirement satisfied because y'all go out and get bids from different people, manufacturers, or would we have to get someone to bid against y'all to use y'all? Does that make sense? It's, sa it's satisfied by us going out and getting bids. And actually, when so we're you're like, like you're like our architect mm -hmm. for this when they went out on our bond to go out and get from all of the get all, or I guess they're the project manager to get all the I'm business. assuming we would hire you to do the engineering side first. Yes. And then, so, and then they're going to, yeah. So Two steps. Just like, yep. We have to, you have to uh, sign a uh, professional services agreement with us or engineering contract. And then the easiest way or the, the most effective how most people procure us is through a purchasing co-op, either tips, buy board, there's a couple different ones. And we, so our proposal comes through that. It all has to be, it all has to be bid out. We've already won those contracts previously through the purchasing co-ops. That's how it. And what kind of time frame are we looking at before the application is looked at, approved, or that? Well, they already looked at it, but we, they changed applications, and so we had to update it. Basically, they have a newer version uh, than one we had just signed. So they've already looked at it, but I would say after uh, you submitted again today, they'll say yes in about a week. Oh, that quickly. Yeah. Wow. But then they slow you way down. So, so no, they'll no, say no. Yeah, okay. yeah. Then we have to do, it'll take us three to four months to do all the things they need and bid it out and, and design it, and then it'll take them probably two months to review it after we uh, put it all is there is there uh, time requirements how how quick it has to be completed after you get through we well, yeah. i'd hate to do all this and then you have everything that's going to mature at the same time <laughs> rather than doing x amount one two and three or spread it up so you don't have that or is that a possibility or not from when they say go and when they you get an email you got 140 days we, we have 140 days to finish the uar or you go to the back of the line which previously hadn't been. No, no, no. I'm talking about oh, the construction side. Of it. Uh, Let's say approved, yeah. you're approved and they're going to fund you. Mm. Well, no, so, the construction side of so it. So we have to pay up front and then resubmit it back to the state, right? That's right. But you have to use the money, you have to use the money within 24 months 
So okay. I mean, so we have to build it. We have to build it within 24 months, or whatever you're going to ask for reimbursement on. It's 24 months. Okay. But that's right. Yes. Can, can you do part of it and then get reimbursed? Is it reimbursed quickly? I mean, I don't know. They, have... they reimburse within, within about the, a, a week. I mean, what I mean, dogs not trying to pull out a fund balance and get reimbursed from you. No, no, no. Well, so I should actually explain that. They, uh, we, we, we bill on percent of completion. So as we build it, maybe it's 500000 and it's 600000 And you get reimbursed in that? Yes. And you, we send you the invoices and you have to put in all these forms and then they send you the money. So you're only out a couple weeks. What's your question, Julie? And this is the first I've heard of it, so I <laughs> Can we get a copy of your presentation so we can read that also? Absolutely. And I've got a much more detailed one and all that. Yeah. Inventory, so. it got, I mean, it sounds like a neat deal is a good deal. I mean, I it almost sounds too good to be true, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But it, the, the 15 years down the road, when the chillers go out again, I won't worry about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the trick is to these. <laughs> Linda will still be on the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, it sounds too good to be true. The trick is that you have to, it's all about timing. I haven't brought this up to Mr. Gallagher. When we've been working together for five years, it just so happens that y'all have a situation where it works. He did say something about it several years ago, but like you say, at the time, uh, I don't know if it's as good, but money was very cheap, and of course, it was going out for the bond, and we were just scared to overcommit if it didn't work out that way. So, but I appreciate you bringing it now, and I like to say, I, that's. Uh, we just, you know, Jared's been a, a great partner for us, done a very good job. He's helped Justin a lot. He's somebody just to pick up the phone, calls him, and Jared actually answers right for advice. And so he's done a lot of consulting for us, if you want to say that, helped us out in issues. And, um, never, we don't bring everything we talk about, but this is something that that <clears throat> kind of perked our interest that you can really do something good. This is not new stuff. This is it took eighteen it's months. It, this it took eight. If a chiller goes, if both the chillers go out at West Preston yeah. Junior High, it could be eighteen months before we have two Newmans in place. Yeah, and we're that's what thirty thousand dollars a month, a for month one. For yeah. the and so we what, know that, right? I mean, what's what, what's the average cost of of, of a chiller? Depends on the tonnage. I, I, so that my answer would be, what do you, what kind of chillers do you? Let, have? Let's say, which, which, which campus? Did, which campus? We did 220 ton air cooled chillers, uh, both of those at West Columbia so Elementary, elementary right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And uh, Jerry, can you remember our price tag on that? Said like 650 or something like that. That sounds oh, about right for both of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that also included the, the third yeah. one at at Barrow. Mm -hmm. Do. Uh, depending on what you're doing, because you often have, have to do pumps and so on, I'm going to answer your question. I know what you're trying to get to. I mean, they, they can be anywhere from $2,000 a ton to $3,000 a ton. Or, I mean, they can be cheaper, they can be more. But so you're talking about 600 tons of equipment. So it, there can be 600,000. They can be, I mean, they, yeah. not for one, for two. Mm -hmm. with, with, like he's talking about, 18 months to get equipment. So once you're approved, you only got 24 months. Is equipment really equipment readily available to be able to finish the project in today's world? Yes, yeah, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the answer is uh, it's getting better. We are starting to get chillers in 32 weeks, um, but then there are some specialty items that still take a year. Yeah, but most of it is getting a lot better. So you feel like you could complete the project in 24 months with current supply chain? Issues. Yes, for sure, for sure. We 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 uh, order all the big stuff immediately. And if if you're approved and the money's funded, is there any prepayment if we decide to pay that loan off early? No, there's no prepayment penalty, and you can pay however you want. Meaning whichever funds, they don't care how you pay us. They just want to know that they have to give you the money back. I think that's all the questions so, I have right now. So I'm popping them up. Linda's got one. Come on, Linda. There were fifty. You said fifty projects in the list you popped up there. How many? How many were you involved in? Uh, oh, 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 of our the E three projects. Yes. Uh, well, fifty uh, Seco projects. We've done three hundred projects. Um, of the Seco, gosh, I don't know, twenty, twenty-five. You mm -hmm. personally. So tell me the worst case scenario and the problems that you have that we might encounter. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> and I'll be, I, was, I don't understand all that, but I will understand that. In a, in a, in a, re, in a, uh, a regular project or one that involves Seco? Seco. Seco. Whatever you're planning for us, or you would like to Seco. plan for us to do, I want to know what can go wrong. Um, they delay, they'll, they'll, uh, when I say they, I mean, it's, it's worth it because of the, uh, the interest rate. 
they'll push back three months sometimes or longer for them to go through all their signature processes, which in Port Inches Groves in instance, which is happening right now, they had to order the chillers two months ago and we're still waiting on them. So the worst case is that we just, they should order them without final approval. I mean, meaning they never get their money back, but they just went in good faith. They're like, hey, we're just gonna order them and we'll pay for them if this falls through. So. So I'm sorry. So yeah, they they will slow they'll slow the process down sometimes. They're not meaning to. They just have to go through all their checks and, and, and things. As far as the construction of the project, Seco has nothing to do with that. If anything goes wrong, that's that's. So you're back on. You're, when you're saying PNG, they needed the chillers on site. PNG needed the chillers because right. they. So it's a timing issue for them. That's right. right. So, so we could we could run into some timing issues if something was to go down while we were in the process. That's what it is. Their their chillers are failing. So they were they were we're all waiting on Seco to hurry up and finish their approval and contract. Um, Seco doesn't have any. I'm, so that's not a program problem. That's that's a that's PNG a, problem. Yes, yes, that's right. And the, but, but to go through SECO, you just have to wait for that. So the long story short is SECO is not the bank. They want to give this money out. They give out grants all the time. They, um, they're, they, you just have to go through their process. So they don't oversee anything. They have no um, to the program. If it really, if, if there's anything built wrong, I mean, that, that would be on us. Or designed wrong, that's on us. SECO doesn't get in the way of any of that. It doesn't but change how they're verifying that your plans. They just want, yes, right. they're, that's right. They make sure that what we've designed and what we're put together is going to work. And their power of veto happens how often? <laughs> I don't know. Good question. <laughs> oh, for in, in what yeah, we like they go, uh, we're not giving you that after all. Oh, or never, you no. didn't do something right, or <laughs> we're out of money, like we're out of money. Because <laughs> you gotta, you got to get our money before we get their money, right? Yes. So how closely are you going to work on my CFO so that we <laughs> that we get payments made and she's not in a bind paying her? She doesn't know me yet. <laughs> if we do these projects, we'll become real good friends because it's a constant process um, where we're, we're, we're submitting and we put everything together for you and then you, you put it in their portal. I've never seen them veto any, they don't veto payments. What they'll say is, hey, you filled this out wrong, resubmit, and then we resubmit it. They, I've never seen them not pay. It, they, they don't become insolvent because this is a giant pot of money that was, uh, I don't want to go too much history, but it was, it was created when Texas won a lawsuit against um, oil companies. And they, they didn't know what to do with the money, so they put this money in a pot of a revolving loan. So they have tons of money. All these loans for 40 years are slowly paying back and they just refund themselves. So so I have never seen them. What they'll do is veto our engineering. They'll say, no, it's this, or no, it's that. But you but that has that's before any contract. Well, once, uh, once, they, yeah. once they approve your engineering design and approve that they're gonna give us the loan, it's you tough. haven't had any issues with them funding or doing anything after that? No, point. I know what you're asking. That's right. No, I'm just trying to be as clear as I can about right. what they do. No, I've never, I mean, and I've, so I've, I've been doing these projects. I know I look relatively young, but I did my first SECO project 18 years ago. I've never seen them do any of this. Is that your senior project? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you do the. <laughs> I, I, I always need to explain it. <laughs> See, in the PNG situation, they they're buying the chillers before they get their total approval that they're going to get the loan. Is yeah. that right? So, well, they, and they did. They ended up getting the loan and all that. But. but when they bought it before they got approval, can they roll that into that loan? Yes, because it was in the design, I guess. That's right. All they really did was give a PO for us to order it. They didn't buy it. it oh, okay. Just, yeah. Okay. They just I, they didn't I have any it. money. They, yeah. The, okay. That's yeah. They, you're not allowed to spend any, give any money to us or spend any money until you're con in contract. Okay. They just gave us the PO and said we, you know. They feel we'll pay you if it, you yeah. feel confident yeah. both of it. So that we can actually order the equipment. Okay. So cool. I know I took way more time than I thought it would. Thank you very much. <laughs> no Thank you. Yeah, we, need to know. Yeah. we try to be an active board and understand things, so we try to ask questions. Thank you. Thank well, you that's Brandon. why, you that's why I asked you to be here tonight, because that was <laughs> way beyond what I could do. That's all right. yeah. um, if you have more, I will send all the information. And, and yeah. the, the best part about these is it'll just make sense. And if it doesn't, you just don't do it.
it's not, I mean, that's, that's it. They're very, very straightforward. Everybody will see, oh, well, this is going to work, or it's not. So, so if they prove us next week, since you just refiled it from the application, <laughs> saying it will call it. So at next meeting, would you have something for us to officially approve, or what's the timeline after they approve the application? Next board meeting, well, you'll have to uh, select someone as a, uh, uh, or you can designate Mr. Galloway to approve somebody as an engineer. Okay. I think that's all I have. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Be safe. Thank you. Well, that concludes the next report. <laughs> <laughs> Right, best one yet. Best one yet. Yeah, yeah that's uh, really, I, I don't have anything further to add on maintenance. I mean, like I said, you know, we're gearing up for graduation and then uh, starting to uh, prioritize our summer projects and just get our ducks in the in row so that we can continue to just keep doing what we do and, and keeping the, the lights on and the doors closed. I know Mary talked about Wild Peach and the canopy. I went by there last night, and that is very impressive the design, the, the structure. It looks like it's built in it probably lasts longer than the school. <laughs> the, the iron beams are, I mean, it's really impressive that they use, I mean, very, very good quality construction. Yeah, I, I, was, I was impressed. It exceeded my expectations. Me too, by far. One other thing with that, uh, we are, we are going to light up under that new canopy now that it's okay. constructed. We are, we, we already got our uh, suspended uh, LED light fixtures on order so that we can go ahead and hang those so that it's lit up, you know, for security and, and you know, just so people can actually see. Yeah. So that, that's in, the wheels, the wheels are in motion on that. Cool. Just so everybody knows. Yeah. So there, there is one other staff request, and we've known this for over a year, that once this project gets done and it opened up, it kind of changes the flow of the campus. And so there's, they have some recommendations for us to kind of alter the fencing. Fencing, yeah, and, we talked and, about that, yep. Mm -hmm. To kind of create kind of a secure gated entrance. And so we've kind of got some ideas already. Uh, it, more, it'll be a summer project for us, but yeah, we would like to be inexpensive, huh? Yeah. Shouldn't be oh, some expensive. No, no. Yeah. 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 It's going to tie into what we already have. But it's going to kind of create that front entrance, kind of like the West Brazos Junior High. Mm -hmm. We have that where they can <coughs> secure it if they need to. Well, that concludes the maintenance report. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have questions. This, this is the first meeting. Every time you kind of bounced around and moved, your back must be not giving you problems. You must have, been on, you must have had a good spring. <laughs> you know? Here, no evil, speak no evil. <laughs> it's good to see you happy and smiling at a meet. <laughs> uh, I feel good today. Good. I'm not wore out like normal. <laughs> Thank both of y'all. I can't Thank take it you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank y'all. Safety and security. So I just have a few things. You have your uh, form uh, in your in your packet there. Uh, just some update on projects, on ongoing projects. It seems like I'm talking about the uh, there the uh, the coffers for the shatter resistance film. Plan on finishing um, West Brazos Junior High this week. It said by Wednesday. That means probably Friday. Um, so uh, they'll be moving on to Wild Peach next. So Mary, you might want to get your people ready. Uh, for them to be coming down there probably next week. Uh, so hopefully we'll get that <coughs> job completely finished mid-April mid or at least by the end of April. Just something new uh, kind of ties into the fencing. There's a new safety and facility enhancement grant that's come out or will be coming out and that we'll, we're going to try to apply for. And essentially it's designed for the district's complete mandated safety enhancements. We're about there meeting yeah, I, the, the fencing for Wild Peach. <laughs> It could be something we tie into that. You know, where, where there are certain things we're required to do, but with our original uh, uh, safety and security grant, we pretty much met all the requirements. The film update and the silent panic, silent panic alert technology is the two big projects that we're still waiting to finish. Um, but those are some things like that fencing that we could use that money for. It says funding may be used for other statutory school safety requirements and allowable expenses, and fencing is always an allowable expense. So that grant application will open March 28th. So hopefully uh, it, it's, it's one of those grants that you, you apply for. You get it historically, so hopefully we'll be getting some extra uh, money there. Uh, Chief and I got an email today. Uh, the campus maps have gone through their final revisions, so we, we expect a finished project here next week. Uh, thanks to the principals, they've done an outstanding job of going back through and updating those things so that we can make sure they're right. So we'll have new campus maps everywhere 
uh, throughout the district. Chief also told me yesterday that the radios that you purchased for us back in the fall have officially, uh, they arrived at the vendor. The vendor's been programming them and we're expecting them in the district uh, hopefully by the beginning of next week. Uh, the ongoing bullhorn update, we, you know, two board meetings ago, we kind of uh, put a, put, we went out for another vendor, we got, we secured that vendor, we got a PO out, the parts have been ordered, Josh emailed me Monday and said they're back ordered and the, and the bullhorns won't be here until April 3rd. So that's where we are. Uh, we have a date, uh, so, which is a lot better than what we had two months ago when we were just trying to get our, the, the vendor to come out. Uh, Mary uh, had a TA intruder drill today. Uh, she was successful. The campus was successful despite the fact that they were planting uh, seeds out. No, they came before that. Oh, did they? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, they loved all that big high fence that y'all put up. Yeah. No, the stuff in the front <clears throat> that y'all were just now talking yeah. about. They okay. loved the high fence. <laughs> That's always been a thing of mine. We put new fencing. Y'all paid for us to put fencing up, but I really would like to see uh, eight foot fencing around the playgrounds. But that's another that's another conversation. Yeah. Get us a grant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. Working on it. Um, and then um, the last thing, it did not it didn't make it on the list. But I had a conversation with Josh after I'd already printed this up. But the silent panic alert technology. That's the other long project, big funding project that we've been working on getting done. Uh, it's finally active. Uh, we've been working with Databox. They finally got, they've kind of, they came out here. They've been working with the servers. Basically, that's going to have the ability for teachers to have phone access, access on their computers to press a button, make a 911 call, lock the doors down. So it's active. We haven't pushed it out to the teachers yet simply because they're still working on the, uh, uh, the configuration of the front door lockdown. Because when it happens, the requirement by the state is it automatically locks your, your electronic doors. Well, all of our front doors are electronic doors. The other ones stay locked all day, but that front door is open, so it has to be able, so when that button's pressed, the door's automatically locked. So that's the part we're waiting on. And we'll have that done pretty soon. And that's all I have tonight, unless you have any questions. And Chief, you here to talk about your monthly report if they have any questions. Yeah, you have in front of you. Cost of service last month with one arrest, but we did bring the K9 out. Uh, same results as we've been having. Uh, we did pay out $100 in Crime Stoppers payment last month. Already, already halfway through this month, we, we've already doubled that. So Crime Stoppers is working. So other than that, any questions? Oh, here you have assaults. What, what would qualify as an assault? Using fights. Just fights. fights. Okay. Where parents want to come in and file charges, and we talk to them, they don't, usually they, they change their mind the one they decide they don't want to file the charges, but we do a report. Uh, it's been brought to our attention, we're going to do a report. Okay. <clears throat> Questions or comments? Where are most of these assaults happening? Chief? Sorry? Where's most of the assaults happening? Majority of the junior high. I don't have it broke down on here, but most of them are in junior high. Ms. Final now, she's curious. I'm not surprised. <clears throat> Anything else? We're going to the instruction report. Uh, tonight we have a short report for you. Uh, it'll be next month. Of course, as you heard, you, you know that we're doing our, uh, our our get ready testing right now. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have your results next board meeting. <laughs> so uh, anyway, with that, uh, we thought it would be nice. We've talked about uh, becoming part of the workforce program and grow your own teachers and it's kind of another different or the same program but growing our own teachers and so this one works a little different a little different it's funded a little different but long story short is bringing is bringing right now focusing on people that work for us that want to work on their bachelor's degrees that are going to work for us get their school paid for at the end of the day they, they come back and work for us and owe us, owe us time uh, when they get done with that. So Ms. Stubb has been uh, attending meetings for what, since 
like two days after you got hired last year into the position. So uh, anyway, we're going to give you a report uh, on so you, so you can understand how this program is going to work. Okay, so he called it a Grow Your Own. It's actually an apprenticeship program. Um, the, the difference kind of between the Grow Your Own that a lot of districts do is um, there's a lot of on-the-job training where um, the candidates that are in these different on-ramps, and I'll get into that in a minute, go through different um, micro-credentials. And it's, you have teachers that come in from ACP programs and even from college that don't know what to do when they get in the classroom as far as um, classroom management goes, how to set up their classroom. So the micro-credentials start in on-ramp one. There's four different on-ramps. Um, and they teach them anything from how to set up a classroom effectively to um, aggressive monitoring, which is a lot of the things that um, I know a couple of our elementaries do are the Teach Like a Champion um, program, and it pulls some of that into this. So the candidates do miss some time where they are pulled for half a day to come basically to like a professional development where they learn these things a couple times a month. Um, but at the same time, they are working for us. So they are in um, any role from a secretary to a child nutrition worker to a paraprofessional. So they are fulfilling um, a job for us while they're doing this, while they are also going to college. So that's kind of the difference between this and a, and a grow your own. Um, with that, this kind of just introduces the, the on-ramps. Like I mentioned, there are four of them. Each one comes with a different tier of support, and it's the on-ramps are kind of based on where you are at with your education. We've switched this. Um, I know it's kind of small, but this slide kind of shows you what qualifications meet each on-ramp. So on-ramp one would mean you're gonna be in this program for four years for us. So you would be working in a role for four years prior to becoming a teacher. So um, you may have zero hours, you may have 30 hours. It just kind of depends. Somewhere usually between between that, one and 30. Um, <coughs> on ramp two is usually 60 hours of college or less, and they um, would come in with three years in the program. So when people, we've started this, let me kind of back up a little bit. We have asked, our current employees who is interested, they have submitted applications. I have as it closed the internal application yesterday and we have 15 candidates, um, which is really good. Those are people that are already are fulfilling roles for us that we can eventually get to be teachers. Um, and obviously are committed to the district because they most of them have been here for a while. Um, so moving on, 90 hours, some of them have associate's degrees to be in on-ramp three already, and they would fulfill two roles. And then your final year, on-ramp four, is um, where you're, you're basically in a classroom full-time. You uh, may have an overseeing teacher. You may be running that classroom on your own. It just depends on kind of where you're at and what mentor or supervising people we have for whatever role um, that is. Now with that, let me say what's what I found is wonderful about the 15 candidates that we have is the this program is a fellowship with BISD and six other school districts. Um, BISD started this a couple of years ago and they did it for the hard to fill roles like special education, your bilingual, your ESLs, math and science. Um, looking at our candidates, most of them are in some of our hard to fill care roles. They're working with our autistic kids, they're working with life skills, they're working with our behavior students and they want to continue working with that type of student. So they're looking to get special education degrees with that. And not all of them, but quite a few. <laughs> so um, that kind of tells you a little bit about the on-ramps and how it comes in. And um, the next thing I'm going to share with you is kind of the RTI partners. And like I said, BISD started this. So these are partners that they already have set up. They've done all the legwork for us on this. And we are kind of just going to be in fellowship with them where it's really at no cost to us. Um, we just benefit from some of the things they have already set up in place. Um, the first one, and just to kind of give you an a overview, some of the other school districts in this are um, Hutto ISD, which is in the Austin area, Hitchcock, um, Deer Park, Sheldon ISD, so they're not really local to us. Hitchcock maybe is probably the most local. 
Um, but Brazosport College is one of the partners, and a lot of our current applicants already have Brazosport College hours or they're currently attending there. So with that, there comes some grant money that um, BISD has worked to get that we would benefit from. And um, we have 10 um, openings for grants that run, I think it's $4,250 for each one of our applicants that they would receive for each year that they are going with Brazosport College. Um, the other two big universities are Grand Canyon University, and you can kind of see the cost there. It's broken down by credit hour um, with a total for a bachelor's degree and teacher certification. And I'm gonna go over all this in a minute. Those numbers look big, but it, it's, not a, it's, it's not what it looks like. Um, and then Stephen F. Austin, these two in the middle, honestly, um, they're kind of pulling away from because there is a new university that has started that only works with teacher apprenticeships. It's called Reach University. You've probably never heard of it because I had not either. Um, but the lady that started this went and studied at Oxford and um, kind of took what they do over there with apprenticeships like carpentry and electricians and it's a grant funded university. It's $900 a year. To, that's the one on the, that's the, the one on the far right. Yeah, um, to get your bachelor's degree, so it's very low cost. Um, the only reason we would maybe choose one of these other universities, Stephen F. Austin does have the purple promise to where if we have an applicant that has never had any college at all, they could qualify to have their complete bachelor's degree paid for through them. So basically, you look at each applicant individually and decide what's going to be the best pathway for them. Um, it's kind of like a special education IEP. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's kind of the overview. So I know that, that money is the big thing with this. How are we going to fund that? So um, I took four of our applicants and plugged it into the spreadsheet, again, that they've worked with and set up. It's really small. Um, <laughs> So applicant A, and like I said, these are our current employees that, that apply, is um, currently serving as a paraprofessional for us. This individual would come in in on-ramp three because he has an associate's degree already. Um, he's currently making $12.50 an hour. Uh, it would take two years for him to finish. We would put him in the REACH program. So that would cost $900 in tuition fees. Now, because they're working for us, we work with the Texas Workforce Commission, and we would get, um, depending on if they qualify or not, but think about it, most of these are in roles that are pretty low-paying roles. Um, and if they, some of them are single parents, have children, so 65% of BISDs currently qualify for Pell Grants, and then even higher than that qualify for the workforce dollars. Um, so if you kind of look all the way across there, what his cost would be, you have to scroll over Cody, um, it would make us $9,500 because Texas Workforce gives us the money and we, we pay for his tuition or books or whatever the cost is. But we would get wage reimbursement and workforce dollars. And this is an estimate, um, but we kind of went worst case scenario on, on a lot of it. Um, uh, the second one also you, occurred. You kind of say, like you said, we pay it and then we get reimbursed for it. Well, some of it. Now you do get the work. Some of the workforce dollars come um, up front, and then the like with BC, they don't make us pay the tuition and stuff until December. So they would go to school and then we pay them. But most of it's grant money because BC's got um, a partnership with the, the program where they give us 4250 for each person and the So is the 4250 coming off against the nine whatever? No, 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 that's already calculated in. So you can't really see it because it's so small, but like if you look in year one, this one, oh, sorry, that first person wouldn't go to BC because he'd just be reached. So he wouldn't get the 4250. He would just get the workforce commission dollars. Um, but your second apprentice would, she's a, she has no college hours. So we would start her at Brazosport College she would get the 4250 in grant money plus workforce and wage reimbursement because she's fulfilling a role with us the tuition cost runs approximately 2750 for 12 hours at bc per semester um but with that grant money it offsets it if they complete their associate's degree at bc 
we not only get it for the two years that they're there, but for all four years while they're finishing that grant money. Um, but they have to complete their associates there. So that's why it's beneficial sometimes for us to send them maybe to BC for two years and then to REACH, even though it's a little more costly because you're making a little bit more money off of it. Um, the cost to us, so the third apprentice, is one that currently works at the junior high, has her bachelor's degree already, but is working as a para. So she only needs to get her teaching certification. She's somebody that would come in on, on ramp four. We would probably put her in a classroom to fill a role next year and pay for her to get her teaching certification, which runs about $3,700 a person. Um, we put a residency expense in there of about $1,000. It can be more, it can be less, kind of that's however we decide, because we would want a supervising teacher to oversee her um, that kind of is in the same role for what she's going for. And she wouldn't be fully certified. And although we can DOI, the whole purpose of this program is to give them support and make sure that they're better prepared than somebody that we would normally DOI. And they wind up with certification. Yeah, and they will wind up completely certified. So that one would actually cost us money that's not the right one. It should be. It should say $4,700 in that t estimated total cost um, right there. Yeah. So that one, we would incur cost, but in the long run, you're making money off the other people, so that's how you would pay for it. <clears throat> Apprentice D, kind of, I tried to pull one that would kind of fall in each on-ramp, because you do not want them to all be in one on-ramp, because we want to employ these people when they are done. And if we have 15 all in on ramp four, we might not have 15 openings the following year. Mm -hmm. And so you want them to fall in different categories. Um, that one would be an on ramp two with three years left in the, the program, has a few college hours, is currently already going to BC and working on her degree, but we would let her finish that associates at BC and then move her on to reach. Um, and she would, in the long run, after certification and everything else is paid for, we would get around $28,000 back from between Texas Workforce Commission and Breast for College. So all of that then could go into a fund balance for us to either use to, you know, for whatever we need. I would like to use it to help support the program and continue to, to grow teachers because we've also talked about opening this up to outside applicants at this point because if we're moving some of our paras into other roles, we're gonna, we might need some other to fill them, but we want them to be people that are going to grow in the program. When we say outside applicants, we mean people that are not working Perfect. for CBSD mm -hmm. right now. So no, that was a lot. Um, so I'm not following you. So the, the, the far right column is yes. estimated cost. So the first person we're, we're gonna gain $9,500? I think I sent him the wrong, the wrong one, yes. So it's actually 7,800 because the residency expense would end up being. So your, your tuition is what you're paying for, but you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're expecting a funding of 18,000. So 18 is to us, we're paying 5,500, paying 3,700. The net difference on those is what right. we keep, right? Is what you're saying? Yes, so okay. if we looked at just those four applicants, in year one we should net about 33,000. That's for four applicants. We have 15 that have applied already. Okay. And and that's including the pay we're giving them. Correct. Yes. That includes ourselves. Well, because really you're getting money from the workforce commission. It's a real fact. Right. Not so basically, the only one you really don't get a reimbursement on is you said it is on ramp four. Well, it, it just depends. Every person is going to be different because they're going to qualify for different things based okay. on their home income. Gotcha. So if they're married to somebody at the plant that works and makes a lot more money, they're not going to qualify for something that a single right. person would qualify. And the fire makes room right uh, the workforce is an interview. Yes, the Texas the Workforce Commission, Commission would come to us. Um, and the way they have it set up is Texas Workforce Commission dollars open up October 1st. So we do the interview process August, September. And so we don't always know what they're going to qualify for until then. So that's, you know, a hold up. But with the Brunsport College grants, you do get that money up front. Can you give Mr. Galloway the correct award on what you have yeah, and send it to us so I can mm -hmm. add the numbers you're off and, and that's comprehend just, in my head? It's just here, I can just I'll send it now. Oh, no, I understand. <laughs> Other questions? 
So I guess a part of the interview process would be like, so where do you see yourself in three years? Well, part of the, the, we can set it up however we like as a district, but the way they've done it is they, one, these people have to, one, they have to pass their TSIs, oh, yes, and right. get, they have to qualify to go to college first. So we can offer them a position in the apprenticeship program, but they still have to go through the application process and meet the college's right. um, requirements. So um, that's part of it, but they you also, those. they sign an agreement to workforce for three years after they're finished as a teacher. That would kind of be the plan. Now, if their husband or their wife got a job transfer, we right. wouldn't hold that against them. Um, but that's the plan. Cool. It's interesting, right? It, it kind of raises your eyebrows. So are you saying only BISD is doing this? Well, they, they really kind of are the pilot for it, honestly. But they, they have all of these other districts um, that have now joined in a fellowship with them, but they've only opened it up to certain districts. Um, and there's some things transpiring with some of the people that started over there right. that are they're kind of going off on their own, and they're going to be basically running this program. Mm -hmm. so. And they're already taking outside people. Yes. A BISD has been taking outside people. She said, I talked to her today for quite a while, and she has 97 current active, and they've already exited 34 of them. Wow. So, and, and she said for principals and administrators, like their principals don't worry anymore about good paras because they know they're going to be trained properly. And they come to her and ask, who do you have for me? So I know a young lady that's actually in the program over there right now, and it's an eye-opening experience. So what a, what a, for them. In talking with Wendy, one of my questions to her is, so since we're in the same program, what's the what's the, the fee to swap? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That'd be right. great. I don't want to yeah. break any bridges yet. Sounds like a win-win, though. Anyway, I thought you'd enjoy hearing that. I mean, it's, yeah. It's an so did time. you qualify the people, the 15 that you... I want to fall. I've told Steve today. I would like. I would like to take all of them. If I mean, they, 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 so you have 15 applicants, but you haven't actually qualified them for a program. We, we have inter, We're going to set up interviews for next week. We're going to make them go through the. Because not thing. everybody may not make the program, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it, it would kind of be silly for us not to take them. Honestly, okay, so you're I didn't know. To do you know, yeah. your head. Okay. Because we'll get paid on most of them, um, but it's some of them they're gonna they have no college hours so it's gonna be passing that tsi getting okay, yeah, they okay, okay, okay. so there's gonna be different things that they will have to do before they can actually there's some criteria for them to qualify basically right for this okay yes but they did go through a process the principals have been writing letters of recommendation for them um we're kind of making them do the whole shebang even though they already work for us just to i mean part of it's like it's a commitment from them so they're gonna be going to school and working at the same time. That they have a business manager degree and they come here mm -hmm. and we, we hire them on. Would those people also qualify for this type of program or not because they already have a degree or? No, so like one of the ones that I use as an example already has a bachelor's degree, <laughs> um, but does not have the teaching certification piece. She's working now as a special education aide and wants to go through the certification to get that. So she would cost us a little bit of money, but she wants to work in SPED, and that's a... So is it the same, like the ACP this. thing, and what do they do to get it, or is this a different It is, but she also gets this micro-credential piece, where she would get the trainings and stuff throughout the year as well, and have, um, it's called, they call it a residency that last year, okay. to where, um, you know, she has a supervising teacher, um, and sometimes it may be two, if, there's all different ways that you can do it to where you put two of these that are not paid teacher salaries, but they're covering classrooms and you have one supervising teacher over both of them that may be the teacher of record. Right. So. Okay. Very interesting. Thank you. That's all on that? That's it. No test scores after test. <laughs> <laughs> uh, financial report. Okay, dear and our budget meeting we had, we really kind of talked about the February financials. Um, so I believe I'll have anything there. We have reached out to um, Mo Casey and Sam Coe about the Vader, and we're just waiting to hear back information from them. So we have reached out to them. At the next meeting, I would like for you to kind of refresh our memory. We did the budget last year. We took Shore's balance to 
some shores from out. So that type of dollars we have to replace in the next budget because we basically used all of that fund balance in shores. If you could kind of give us that number that we know we have to replace. I know we don't know the income side of it. I feel, to me, the budget meeting, we, we, we feel good about this year and how we're gonna end up with, if we do have a loss, it's not gonna be huge like we first thought. But for the budget process going forward, I know we have to look at the income, but we, we have to know what we have to add back to that income. Does that make sense? What the I'm numbers saying? added back, and I think we've got a handle on I that. think you have a pretty good, I, I just don't remember what they are. I mean, I, I don't remember what that number was we took out of that uh, situation. And then this year we had one or two of the solar farms that came on that we booked, are we? Put that into the budget. We did. Do we have one more that possibly is coming on this year? Did, okay. Yes. So who can no see if that's one. finished and will Mo Casey, they're the one Mo that kind of looked at that? Well. Okay, so we can check with them on that. Yeah. So keep in mind, that's a, you know, you've got the two that are paying, right? Right. right. And there's a possibility that both of those are going to owe more based on growth. Right. And then the third one. But, but yeah, that, they'll be the ones that do that. And remember, that calculation is a yearly calculation based on their upper, their appraisal. Right. They're, they're estimated value. Actually, but... we got it sometime in April because yeah. they have to have our property values right. as well, and that doesn't come out to like. Yeah, so I knew it wasn't yet, yeah, but I, was, look at I thought the... we said there was one that possibly could come over yes, this year. Yes, we did. And the, the Dow one, the floating one, is it's gone. gone. They, they, they pulled it. They pulled it. So those are the only oh. three we have active as far as those. Okay. Um, so just like Julie said, it'll be the end of April, 1st of May, before we get that uh, 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 property property um, number. So yeah. that we can start working on um, The other piece that we did talk about is we have reached out to Samco. In your folder, I do have a bond, uh, you know, based on, we have a timeline of, of expenditures. We sold the first 40,000. Of the bond election, we have kind of a timeline of, of you know, we're, we're hitting right now about four to five million a month in expenses, and so come, we talked with Sam Cup. Yes, it's, it's two pages. So, mm -hmm. this is the first page. Okay, calendar. On. Yeah, and so Nick Nick Westerman has put together a, a calendar of what, based on that schedule of payments, of what it looks like we need to do. So. You'll see that we'll be selling bonds by the time how we're doing budget. <laughs> so, long story short, everything we do, right, is important, right, and keeping and, and keeping the end in mind as we're going through this. So, I just have a quick question on that check that they gave us tonight. Does that go into our? It goes, goes to our educational foundation. foundation. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, they wanted That's to. They I want this just... to be turned around and used on teachers. Okay. That's the request. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Or teacher grants. Right. That, I that knew that, but kids. I was just kind of confused. I didn't want to ask mm -hmm. them. Make sure that that's where right. I was going to. So if I'm reading this right, next month they'll bring us something to yes. see with the sale. They would like to. They would like to come sit. They would like to come. This is our sale. Month. This is our second sale, right? Correct. Correct. We already had one. Correct. Are we funding the balance of the bond? Let's see. Yes. Move forward with first sale. Well, uh, yeah, I think that we did one last year. Yeah, this we probably should say next sale. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to fund. The, we're going to fund the rest of them now, right? Yes. yes. That would finish out the project. Yes. Okay. Go through that okay, so we'll see them on the June of next month. Yep. So I'll let it back. I thought we were meeting tonight. Let them know. Okay. So look forward to seeing. Them. Okay. Julie, that's it for you, right? That's it. Fine report. All right. So for the bond report, I've got some things for you. Uh, first thing. Uh, is I gave some information about the tennis courts. We've actually got a tennis court design now. If you look at that, uh, to the top, it's uh, 17th Street uh, or Business 35. If you look to the far right, you'll see Roughneck Drive comes down. You can see the metal building that sits on the corner. So now you can kind of see the placement we have of the tennis courts. Uh, it's a six tennis courts, one fence around it. In the middle, there is a kind of, a, I don't know what they call it, but it's like a tension area in the slab. 
And so that's a perfect place to put a small three foot fence. And so it'll be three courts on one side of the fence, three courts on the other side of the fence. And this just a small three foot fence so that the balls don't roll all the way to the other end of the court. Um, so the two middle courts are be uh, striped as pickleball courts. Um, the, um, you can see the walkway that comes. Can they play tennis on those also? Okay. Yes. They're okay. striped for pickleball and tennis. Pickleball okay. is a UIL sport now. <laughs> yeah. I understand that, but we need six courts so we can yeah. have yeah. The answer is yes. And they have to be able to have six courts to be playing on. Yeah. I'm just kidding. The answer is yes. yes. Uh -huh. And then you see the walkways across the bottom of the tennis courts. So the gates in, into the courts will be along the bottom. And the top does show some gates, but we have taken those out. Uh, we did. We originally had the, all of the courts lighted, but in theory, I, I haven't talked to anybody that's seen more than two sets of people playing tennis at one time. And so we're gonna just light the three courts closest to the middle, to the right. Great idea. So it saves us a little bit of money when it comes to that. And so we should, uh, you know, the metal building has its own uh, power. And then of course there's transformer that, that was there for the house that, that we tore down. So we should be able to run everything we have off of the power that comes from there. We don't have to run anything there. Can we at least check if they can at least run power where if we not power? Put conduit in the ground. Conduit so in the just, ground. So, so if we ever run, run lights, we we're already set up to go. The, the one that run what? The, the one conduit. Can we ever put lights on the other? Oh, oh we're go ahead and set the conduit. Set the conduit when you pour the stuff. That's the cheap part there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And maybe size the transfer so, so if you did add it, because right. it shouldn't yeah. pull that much difference. Yeah. But, right. So, or stage yeah. so the metal building, are we looking at putting bathrooms and stuff in there for no. the tennis? There's, or there's, no, there's no, the only sewer is a sink. Okay. So it does have running water, does have electricity lights. Uh, have you, if, I don't know if you've played at Freeport Golf Course. There's a metal building out there, and they open it up. That'll kind of be what they it is. There It'll be a sitting area, a place where you can serve meals in between matches, picnic table style. And so what we have to do, Justin's already got it arranged to, we're gonna have to cut some concrete out and level it. But Justin's got that taken care of. There are some metal panels that are damaged. Justin's already uh, met with the uh, same group that did uh, Wild Peach to get color match on that, and then also, the, the downspouts and the guttering is good green color, and we're going to change those to match the rust color that we have on the buildings at Griggsville. They can have a board where they put their draws and stuff up. Correct. Or, yeah, so. a board. You know, yes, exactly. We, the lead, leader, well, I don't know what they call yeah. it, the tennis match. Right? When are they going to start that? Uh, if everything's going the way it's going right now, those courts will be ready to play at the beginning of the school year. Nice. So will this be a summer project? Uh -huh. Well, yeah. so you're saying the metal building will be used for this. And will, will there be a sidewalk going to the metal yes. building? Okay. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. Some of that we're taking care of. Some of some of it's in there. Some of it's going to be in ours. That we'll take care. Of. As you can see right now, uh, nobody can really decide where the stands go. Do the stands go on the end of the courts, or do they go on the bottom of the courts? Right? Do you have a stand for each court? Do you have one stand in the middle? Nobody can really decide that. And so we've asked them to just move forward with that, and then we'll figure out the stance issue. So no restroom on that side over no, there at all? the restroom, so if you follow, if you come out the bottom of the courts and use that walkway and come mm -hmm. across, the minute you come across 16th Street, you can see the shadow down there, and that door, that door leads to the restrooms, into okay. the main hallway and the gyms. So it's okay. not that, it won't be that long of a walk. Our locker rooms, matter of fact, the girls' locker room is right inside that door. The board's locker room is one door down, and then the set of restrooms in the, in the gym is there as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will there be a walkway to those also? Well, you just walk, it'll be, it's concrete. Oh. It's concrete, yeah. Cool. So, uh, if you come down, you can, James, did you kind of point right there? Did you see that parking lot right there? It's right in the middle, to your left, to your left, to your left, to your left. That parking lot right there. That's the, if you notice, the parking lot to the left is the administration build parking lot right behind us. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the new parking lot we're putting in for ag, if you want to call it that. Now, you can see to the bottom on the left, there's like a little median. We've had that today taken out. So you'll have a big concrete area for trucks backing in, trailers backing in, trailer storage. Okay. So it'll be a ni nice area that'll be right across from the entrance to the Act building for that. 
So wanted to show you that. Also, uh, I think I've shown you, Justin has also um, uh, got uh, pricing taken care of for Barrow to get both of those tennis courts up and running. We, not, we do, uh, he's already had the trees trimmed off of the, off of the fencing and the courts. The same group that's gonna build these courts is working with us there. They're gonna resurface them, recode them. New standards, new nets, new fencing. Justin's taking care of the lighting. And so that would be a summer project. So by the time we start school, we'll actually have 12 playable courts in CBI State. Are they going to make one of those? Both, both, <coughs> both of them are lighted. The, the, the barrel will have a, we had to read, for safety purposes, we have to, that's why we're waiting for summer, we have to redo the fencing so that the campus can lock the, the, the visitor gate mm -hmm. and then after the visitors can get in while the other side's locked and they can't get through to the campus. Uh, both, both of those courts will be striped as pickleball as well and they'll have a button with the, the lights will stay on for two hours okay. at night. And of course the lighting will help with campus security as well. Mm -hmm. So very excited about that. Our tennis coach just sent me an email, came through, very excited about uh, what we're looking at there. So, okay, Cody. Next, uh, I, I told you about graphics, and so next is a, is, a, is a graphics. One of the things we asked the team to do was um, to help us with a CBISD logo, um, kind of taking the mascot off of it. And kind of, you know, we, we asked them, y'all know what we're talking about, we want a professional logo. And so here are three examples um, that they kind of brought back. We kind of like the bottom one. <laughs> so the star is the first capital of Texas is that that's where the star is, right? And so if you look at it, Brazoria and West Columbia school systems both back in the day have a big both both have a big tie to early education. You know, you got the the, the old elementary down there. You have this statue of Henry Smith. I mean, it's just Missouri and West Columbia when it comes to or the early history of Texas are just important. So we think that first capital star uh, makes a little bit of sense. So anyway, just next, Cody. So here is an example. I don't know if you've seen this rendering. Uh, that since we added the two stories, so if you can, you see the, uh, if you look on the, to the right, the gym, you see the, the, the metal sign we have outside, which is the, the Elmo, Texas, uh, then to the left, that's that two, where we've, we've come in and made that two story now. I don't know if you've actually seen that rendering. The bottom or the, or, or the aut um, autism behavior life skills rooms, the tops are just regular classrooms. Uh, but now, and then it bends around two story uh, coming towards the library there to the left. Uh, so you can't really see it, but the library there to the left has kind of like a, a metal graded uh, at the top below oh, the yeah. roof. Mm -hmm. you see, uh, if you can see it, 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 it has a lettering in there. Mm -hmm. Right. It, 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 when they originally designed it, it said Columbia High School right there. But the way we have it now, Colum it's Columbia over the library and to the right where the gym is, it'll say Roughnecks. Right. right. So kind of, kind of neat. So the neat thing about it, the next one, Cody, this is a picture at night. And you'll notice that the Elmo metal sign is backlit. And so um, we are looking at it on that side. We've also going to look at it on the other side of the gym and see what's the best for uh, you be able to sit from the football field, you be able to sit from the baseball fields, uh, Little League baseball fields driving by on logins, driving by on Roughneck. We think that's a pretty cool uh, addition to that. That's very nice. Uh, that's walking into the gym. And so the, oh, sorry. the next things I'm going to show you, these are, these are our first look at renderings. Uh, first thing I want you to look back, the, the far back, that's the student section. Um, it, on top of there, what you can see is that signage says Columbia High Forever. Uh, what we're going to do is actually make that signage go all the way, uh, they cover the whole seating area. Uh, the little uh, gray and black paneling you see on the walls, those are sound acoustical tiles. Remember we said we want this to be a performance area where, where band, choir can, can do their facilities, where we can hold awards night in there if we want to, and use a microphone, and then everybody hears clearly without the reverberation and so forth. As you can see, plenty of room between 
the stands and the playing court. So, you know, we won't have the three-year-old little brother running onto the court during a basketball game or volleyball game. So it, makes, uh, it makes the supervision a little bit easier, right? So looking at this, that's coming in the main entrance to the left is the home side. Uh, what you can't see is the middle two sections are chair back seats. On the right is the visitors. The nice thing about this is when we leave, the visitors have their own exit and the home team has their own exit. So you won't have them mix the home and visitors after, after it's up. Uh, the court, uh, you'll see some, you can't really tell what's going on with the court, but we'll show you in the next couple. Uh, before we go into the scoreboards, that's kind of what our scoreboards are gonna look like. The first two, the first one to the left is the, is the, uh, the main scoreboard in the main gym. The next one in the middle will be in the main gym as well. If you remember in the gym we just tore down, we did have a volleyball scoreboard, and so you'll see that's what that volleyball scoreboard is. It looks a little different, and it has uh, the volleyball <laughs> scores across the bottom you can see uh, for each game. The right will be the scoreboard that's in the auxiliary gym. There, uh, they're missing one thing. There should be one of the stars above Roughnecks and Ladynecks. The next one, Cody shows you that's kind of a dope diamond star and you can see that metal uh, the metal truss there and that that will be black uh, the roughnecks is kind of a silver color but the, the truss will be black and the, and the star will be silver okay uh, here are some designs of, of court so we, we've had a series of graphics meetings with with some of our staff uh, and looking at what they uh, might like uh, we wanted to play on the first capital thing, and that's where the star comes from. Uh, we wanted to play on the oil field background. And so this is some kind of examples of, of what it looks like. Uh, the team that we put together really liked the idea of not officially naming the court. We're not naming a building or anything. We're just calling it first capital court to try the idea to have something to, where are we going? We're going to capital court, right? to have a, have a theme, uh, you know, the rig, you talk about the rig and Pearland took that years ago. And so nobody really wanted to go there and copy anybody when it comes to that, but we kind of built the oil field rig into it. And so that's one example of a, of a court. Next one, uh, here's some just other options you can see with this one, we got the first couple of a court uh, that's a little bit smaller. We kind of like that a little better. Okay. Uh, the next one, just a little bit different idea. Go ahead. Next one. So you can kind of see what we're talking about there. Uh, we have some different options. These are just to, was the first presentation today to us. And so we'll take that back to our team and we'll, we'll focus on not one of those, but creating one that we like. And so uh, the one that we talked about today is not going to be as busy as what you saw in some of those. All right. So on the other side of the gym behind where the, where the, uh, uh, the students were sitting, you saw uh, Columbia High Forever. This would be on the other end of the gym. This would be if you were in a student sitting section looking back towards the main entrance. If you can see there to the right, that's kind of like your window that would be going out into the main entrance. And so, uh, and again, you can see up top, you can see uh, the, uh, the, sound, the sound panels up there as well. Okay. Uh, this would be coming in uh, when we were looking at that that, uh, that rendering of the gym, if you were coming in from the right, looking at it from the right entrance, this would be what's what what the the, the, the I don't know what you call it the concession area, the seating area. As you can see, it's built. Um, the idea if we wanted to, if the booster club wanted to have their meetings there, they could. If somebody wanted to have a fundraiser serve meals, they could. See, the, the facility is going to be multi purpose and it's pretty cool. Looking there to the right, you see the glass windows. Those, you'd be able to stand there and look into the main gym. Uh, uh, of course, if you walk straight through, you would you would walk out those doors in the, in the special ed autistic area. It would be the right there to your right. I show you to say this: the one graphic area is going to be there, looking up to the left. You're going to see the next one, and that's kind of the graphic we would be looking at: uh, Columbia High School home of the Roughnecks. One of the things you can't that's not really coming through is the background of what that what those uh, what they actually look like. Some of them kind of have a rocky type, a gritty type. Uh, feel and you just, it's just not playing out in the pictures when you see it. Is that wall there the wall where the Texas Elmo's is and that 
if, if, that side of the gym? Yes. If you were if you were standing here looking at that, that's glass, right? Yeah. And that the Texas Elmo would be to your right, out that door to the right. That's what you see in the inside looking out. Yeah, that's inside of it uh -huh. from the outside. That's Correct. from the parking lot looking at the gym that way. Correct. Okay. okay. Uh, this would be walking down the hallway between the two gyms, walking towards the, the boys and girls locker rooms. That's a sign out there that says Bleed Maroon. And you can see they've kind of got some sports figures. But what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put a, a every sport we have at Columbia High School is going to be represented on there. So we're going to make those smaller and have a band across the top and a band across the bottom, signifying each boys and girls sport that we have at Columbia High School. Okay. That is uh, the wall, will be the wall in the weight room. So we'll have one wall decorated in the weight room. This would be, uh, we're not sold on this. Uh, what we're going to change it to is this would be the ag shop. So you can see that if you look at the bottom piece of that, that's the uh, design that would be up top. So if you were walking in from the out, like it's going to be right across from here. And if you're walking in that main door, that's the design you would see walking in. What we're gonna do is change that a little bit. I think what we talked about is saying, taking agriculture and put Columbia up there, and then coming across the bottom, we're not really sure if we wanna say agriculture, or if it should say mechanics, or if it should say industrial, or, or what it would be, because you know we've kind of taken things out. Everybody has their own little room now, right? Floral design has their own lab and room. Uh, you know, what's gonna be taught in there? And that's where we really want to look at. So we might change that a little bit, but just to kind of give you a design. Uh, this is in the building. We have two sit. We have two places where we have stairs. And so uh, on the second, as you as you come up the stairs, right as the stairs bend, and you come up and you walk up the next set of stairs to go, that would kind of be the graphic on one set of stairs. And then the next one, that would be the graphic on the other set of stairs. Kind of like that when you got the, the Derek's kind of kind of sparkling a little bit. That's cool. Okay. So the bistro. And so they picked up on this idea. The idea is that they call it at the Elmo Cafe, and of course it's gonna be right across here. Um, if you look at the entrance, you have the Elmo. What we're gonna change that to is 1922 at the top. And at the bottom, uh, that would be 2000. So what that, you know, kind of just a little story if you don't know it, the one at the bottom is called Millennium Elmo because it was drawn in the year 2000 by none other than Wendy's husband, Chad, though. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the kind that we think that's pretty cool. That, uh, and we think that'll be a big hit. Again, the bistro area is going to serve as an instructional space, but also a place where uh, it's going to see, you know, 35 to 40 people. Uh, we could have we could have rotary meetings in there. You could have banquets in there. You can have uh, dance and dolls can have their end of year event. I mean, you know, you can. It's just going to be a cool place. And, the, and of course, the kitchen and things are attached to that as well. OK, uh, this will be coming in the main entrance from the student parking lot. Uh, that would actually be the outside wall, the inside hallway, the outside wall of the library. I thought that was pretty cool, Bill. Uh, how they took the same concept. Uh, you can go ahead, next one. Next one, this is the library. This is a rendering of what the library would look like. That far wall that we're looking at is kind of a, a, a student center. That's just a huge whiteboard, right? They're seating in front of it. The class can come in. Somebody can bring their class in there and use the whiteboard for presentations. Kids can form study groups in there and do that. But above it is the area of where we have graphics also. The CHS was just a placeholder for right now. The next one will show you kind of what we're looking at with the graphic, uh, the truth, honor, and integrity. <clears throat> you got the new Elmo, but if you go out and you look at the front of the school, or if you go in and look in the uh, in the student center, uh, the both of those were done in the 98 bond in the old part of the school, but that's that the shield, right? It says truth, honor, and integrity. So it's kind of a play on the past with the new as well, okay? This is, would be in the Dance and Dolls room. Uh, remember the Dance and Dolls have a classroom, storage area, uh, locker area, and a dance room that's bigger than the one they had. Uh, so one wall is gonna be all glass, or mirror, excuse me, all mirror. 
The other wall is gonna have a graphic on it. And so that was one example uh, of graphic. One of the coolest things we've said about the dancing dolls is if you haven't been to a football game, they sing the school song at the end of the game. And no matter where you go, people always say, that's pretty cool. We like that. Um, the next one is another graphic of what it could look like. Uh, kind of what we told them, we kind of want them to blend the two, not so much with the boots, but the previous one actually has what our dancing dolls use as a logo, kind of, kind of, kind of mirrors that. So we have, we've asked them to play with those two a little bit. Okay. Uh, this is, so when you come in to the main entrance by the library from the student parking lot, we actually have kind of a student center at the bottom. And it's gonna have the whiteboard area student seating uh, where our kids can go for their study halls or when they have an off period, but we have study places, work, work type places for them to go. We don't really have any signage down there because we have the whiteboard and we have the graphics right there by the library. On the second story, right above the first story work area, we actually have a second work area. And so that work area is not gonna have the whiteboard, why? Because when you put visa V markers and stuff out and it's not really supervised, the first floor is gonna be supervised, right? Because you've got the library and classrooms right there. The second story is a little bit not supervised, so we decided the idea wouldn't be to put markers out there, right? <laughs> yeah. So we're actually gonna have a graphic on that wall. And so that would be the graphic uh, for that area. The nice thing, oh, go back. The nice thing about that one is <clears throat> around the hallway, the second floor is also where our health sciences are. And so the, they're actually gonna, so it's gonna be about 40 steps from there. The health sciences has two classrooms and a lab in the middle. So outside the lab, that will be the graphic on the wall. Say It'll say uh, Columbia High, but then it'll say health sciences. Okay. And then this is something that to try to tie in the old part, they want to take one of the one of the long walls in the current cafeteria and put this design on the current in the current cafeteria. So, I think that's it, Cody. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we you know we've had we've had a series of three meetings with the design team. We brought the PBK design team in, we sat around, we talked to them, we showed them examples, we showed them a history of Elmo's, the signage we've had, and that's what they came back with. So, anyway, our next meeting, I think, is in three weeks. To, to narrow, we'll, we'll narrow things down in three weeks. Yeah. I don't remember that 75 Elmo. No, I, that's why I don't know where the numbers came from. The letters. Okay. I, made the numbers yeah, I don't they, know. They made the numbers, numbers. up. I think we they made them up. Put the beginning one and the ending yeah. one because we didn't know the ones in the middle. We didn't yeah, know. We didn't know that Ours was like the twenty-four one, yeah. but right. but with the look of the yeah seventy-five one. Right, and that, that's what. That's what I remember when I was in high school. Yeah. In seventy. That's what we told them. Is that take? I didn't remember we'll, what. Neil we'll take the nineteen twenty-two and the two thousand. I think yeah. they were going to do like established yeah. 19. Established 1922. And then yeah. put 2000 yeah. at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, we, we had the same thing. Well, I don't know if those years were. <laughs> so she said, yeah. I made the years up. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, but other than that, things are rolling good. Uh, we are, if, if you had to put a number on it, based on the rain, they are on the calendar three weeks behind. All right, so if you look at three weeks, but you count the number of rain days, the number of the number of non-work days is over 50 because of the rain. And so I'm feeling good that they're only three weeks behind. I will tell you, uh, as soon as uh, a seal, uh, as soon as some of the decking starts going in and they actually get the next two sections of concrete poured, they're going to be able to do some things that were they work longer hours, and so they have some, they have an overtime plan to catch up. So. Uh, but as of right now, they're they're very they're very comfortable with the schedule it is, which would mean uh, the two gyms and the locker rooms opening for our students uh, in November, and then being able to open the rest of the school in August of 2025 for the 25-26 school year. But then, of course, right after that would be where the parking comes in. We have to knock F building down and bag building, and then do the parking. So you're looking at total completion by looking at December of 2025 which is a year earlier than when we started. <laughs> so. Good. Nice to see. Yeah.
Questions, comments? <laughs> if not, we'll move into the action items. And the first item is to approve resolution for rifle, rifle resistant body armor grant program. Chief, any comments on that one? No, all that is is just uh, all the officers have, when I got here, they had some old body armor that was handled, they handed down for rifle resistance. That's just one size for all. Uh, there's a grant out there to the governor's office for to get properly fitting. Each officer needs to be fitted for the plate, and there's big heavy plates for the front and back for rifle. Uh, if you go into a situation where a rifle, a high power rifle is involved, and again, it's like the shield grants is it's funded 100% uh, by the governor's office. And it's just part. Of this has to be part of the uploading of the grant. process. Any questions or comments? So, like on your turnover on officers, you're not seeing a big turnover where this is going to. Okay. I make a motion we approve the resolution for the rifle resistant body armor grant program. I'll okay. second. Second by James. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. Next is to approve performance pay CT certificate awards. Mr. Miller, do you have the? Yeah, it's in the. Yeah, you should have a copy of it. Looks like this in your folder. It says CTE uh, industry based certification bonus on the top of it. So uh, when you approve the salary schedule every year, one of the things that you have in there is, is the approval for our CTE teachers. They are paid for $25 for every certification that a student earns. It's incentive money. Uh, uh, that's paid out of our C that we budget in, in, C in our CTE budget, and so uh, this is this is the awards for last school year. So if you look and see it, bro it's broken down by a teacher, the certification earned at twenty five dollars per, per per certificate, uh, and the amount that that teacher would earn uh, per certification at the top. There in the middle, it's the total amount awarded by teacher. Uh, and then underneath that is the grand total of, of $7,450. Uh, we had three CTE teachers that did not return from last year. Uh, the floral design teacher lost out on $2,100 that she would have earned this year if she had stayed in bonus money. She had 85 certificates, certifications last year. And then the educated aid and the, and the vet, uh, the certified veterinary assistant. Uh, in total last year, our CTE teachers produced 386 certifications that were recognized by the state of Texas and 432 total, meaning other certifications that they offer, but we don't get credit for for accountability. So I would ask that you would approve that, that, that bonus money for those teachers. Questions, comments? I'll make a motion we approve the uh, performance based ETs. Certificate awards as presented. I'll second it. Second by Becky. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That carries. Next, we have consent agenda, which is the approved budget, amendments to donations, approve uh, sale of property held in trust, and approve the workday 2024 25 calendar for 240 day personnel. Would anybody like any of that pulled? If not, then I'll make a motion. We approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll second. Second by Ray. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That carries. Anything else for open? Yes. With that, we're going to adjourn the closed session pursuant to the Texas Government Code, the Open Meeting Act, Section 551074. We will consider the employment of professional personnel, discuss the resignation retirement of professional personnel, discuss the performance of personnel, consider administrative contracts, consider where